You're watching Saturday Showcase presented by 5R Energy. And tonight from Clemson, South Carolina, it's the number 12 Tigers and number 18 Virginia. This is the ACC on ESPN. Two of the very best defensive teams in the country go toe-to-toe -to -toe tonight in what should be a dandy in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Dave O'Brien, Corey Alexander, delighted you're joining us as we come to you from our homes. And a thrill to watch a guy like Amir Sims for Clemson who's really come into his own, Corey, as one of the top players in the conference, indeed, in the country coming into play tonight. It is, Obi. And Amir Sims moved to Palmyra, Virginia in the fourth grade. And so Palmyra's right outside of Charlottesville in his Clemson career. Amir has never beaten the hometown team. So this is his last guaranteed opportunity to play against the University of Virginia. He is looking forward to this opportunity and also looking forward to being back on the court after Clemson had to pause due to a COVID protocol. Yeah, he's 0-4 against them. And Jay Huff for Virginia, the seven-footer, is really having an outstanding season coming in at 13.6 rebounds a game. And by the way, can block a shot if you let him. Absolutely. Jay Huff coming off back-to-back 18-point -back games, which were both career highs and playing his best offensive basketball. And right now, this Virginia team finding itself in an unfamiliar position as the second-best defensive mm -hmm. team in the ACC as the Clemson Tigers right now, scoring defense-wise, lead the league. Yeah, they've been holding opponents to just 58 points per game. And we are underway here at Little John. About 1,800 fans allowed into the building. So you will hear a little of that actual noise. We look at the Virginia starting lineup. Kihei Clark, such a big part of that as the point guard who has emerged as a real leader. And the first jump shot goes down from the corner, a three-pointer on target to get Virginia in front. Big bucket by Sam Hauser from the corner. And Hauser, who is actually at 33 percent, is shooting a career low three-point percentage, which is great for many people. But yet, career low for him, knocks down the first one. Line up there brought to you by Clemson Jewelers and right back at it, the Tigers. As we get things started tonight, a couple of those names that, you know, we're calling out. Sam Hauser and Amir Sims, two guys who can score it. But both of these teams are capable of putting the ball into the cylinder. It's not just all about no, defense. No, it's not. Virginia actually scoring over 72 points per game, which is the highest point per game through a home in the Tony Bennett era for the Hoos. So... This Virginia team definitely can score it. They're not the same defensively, but they can put some pressure on you on the offensive end of the floor. Well, Huff got a decent look up top. Could not get the long jump shot to go, but that's very much part of his game. It certainly is for Hauser, too. Clemson on the attack. The banker won't go, and the rebound picked off by Hauser, who takes down eight rebounds a game. The senior from Wisconsin, who actually went to the very same high school and started there that Tony Bennett, his coach now at Virginia, was a big star at. Beekman from the corner can't hit it. And again, Tigers coming in at 9-1, and 3-1 and one in the conference. Their only loss at Virginia Tech. They have knocked off a top-20 opponent in FSU. That was in December. They've beaten Purdue. They've beaten Maryland. A couple of SEC opponents as well. So nothing cupcake about their schedule. And this is an opportunity for Virginia to get their first win over a ranked opponent this season. 0-1 thus far. And when you look at the ACC and you consider the fact that Virginia nor Duke have a win over a ranked opponent this year, I'm sure many people will be surprised to hear that stat. But you're talking about two of the perennial powerhouses in the ACC, especially over the last decade. But yet, out of the gates a little bit slowly this year, trying to find some momentum as the season moves along. Way downtown, but off the mark. 5-2 Virginia. Trying to continue to roll along in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Trying to move their record in conference play to 5-0. Here's Hauser with a touch. The 6-8 senior. Up looking inside. Up top to Clark. Shot clock a factor now as he drives it underneath. Tough angle there, but that's going to be a traveling violation. And the first forced, forced turnover for Clemson, who averages close to 18, forcing 18 turnovers per game, but playing against Virginia, who is second nationally in turnovers per game, only 8.3. So which style will have 
more of an effect or more of an impact in this game. And this is where the area where Virginia has struggled is covering fours and fives that can shoot the three. Amir Sims now over two from beyond the three point arc, but he can't continue to get those open looks. Jay Huff going to have to find a way to recover, get back and contest that shot. Sims coming in at 13 points, six rebounds a game. Guy, you can really play anywhere on the floor. Clemson crashing the glass down by three in the early going. See Sims playing way away from the basket. He thought about leaving for the NBA for about five minutes, but Brad Brunell says he is a very, very hungry player returning to Clemson, South Carolina. And we also have to mention, Obi, that this is the first time the Tigers have played since January the 5th. So, again, they have been off and showing a little bit of the rush, shooting the basketball early. One of the things that Coach Brownell was concerned about, especially, you know, the, not only being off but not being able to get in the gym and practice, didn't resume practice until Wednesday. So you're seeing the rust offensively from the Tigers early. Up got himself inside and got that one to drop the seven footer. Who's playing his fifth year in the program for Tony Bennett makes it seven to two. And we're talking to Brad Brownell this morning. And I think there was real concern about his team being really antsy and jumpy and maybe too much adrenaline because of what you mentioned. Hemming on the court for so long. And here's Hemingway. Yeah, but having to play against Virginia in this test when you're coming off of such a long break <laughs> is really not in the favor of Brad Brownell. He knows how difficult it is to play against this team when you're in rhythm. And Clemson was definitely in rhythm before they had to go to the break. And speaking of in rhythm, Jay Huff is definitely in rhythm. We mentioned in our open back-to-back 18-point -back games for Jay Huff, which are career highs. And he's gotten off to a great start here. And you look at the numbers, shooting 44% from beyond the three-point arc, 65% overall leading the ACC. You think of a guy like that who's a shot blocker, you know, all about defense, but you'd be wrong about that with Jay Huff because right away, Corey, he is on target. Absolutely. You'd be wrong giving him opportunities. He's taking one to the basket, finishing through the contact, and then finding himself from beyond the three-point line. Jay Huff getting it done early on the road. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Five Hour Energy Shots. Get it done. And in part by the Lincoln family of luxury SUVs. Now Virginia off to a quick start. And the last time that Clemson found themselves in a win column against Virginia, you have to go all the way back, Corey, to 2013, 59 to 44 in that one. And that was the year before the turnaround year, which Tony Bennett and I talked about yesterday. I can remember them having T-shirts printed out for the turnaround year, which actually was 2013-2014 when Virginia won the ACC tournament and started this run of the past seven seasons where Virginia has been a national powerhouse. And you look at the fact that they've won 10 in a row over the Tigers. Brad Brownell knows this very well, how difficult Virginia is to play against. And coming off of such a long break having to pause their program due to COVID protocols was not their favorite choice of opponents to be able to go against the Wahoos and you see why early in this game mm, a little back to her cut there and up and in by Clark for two and Virginia lengthens out the lead now to double figures Clark came in averaging 11 points per game he's certainly been more of an offensive factor this year for Tony Bennett the whistle stops the clock with 13.54 to go here in the first half. And, you know, not every play is made with the basketball in your hands. Great cut by Kia Clark and recognizing no one back there, the backdoor cut. I'm sure that was something drawn up by Tony Bennett coming out of the huddle just when you recognize the fact that Clemson's going to put more pressure on you on the perimeter, getting in passing lanes. Tony Bennett called this Brad Brownell's best defensive team that he's had over his tenure. Brad Brownell wasn't sure about that, he said, but it's clearly their most disruptive. But right now, they haven't been able to disrupt the Hoos on offense at all. The Tigers need someone to make a shot, don't they? They've missed six in a row, and that's going to be a traveling violation. So the last couple of times down the floor, not even able to get a shot up there. That's how good the defense for Tony Bennett's been. 
Well, and, and that has really been the issue for Virginia this year. We talked about the fact they're scoring the most points they've ever scored in Tony Bennett era, but defensively they have not been the same group, but off to a great start in this one thus far. And Tony Bennett has said that he feels as though this team is going to get better defensively, but yet they've had to pause several times in itself. So this team has had their issues as far as being able to have – gain some type of rhythm or continuity but it's happening right now Virginia winning his first four ACC games and their last 12 overall now you mentioned the game where you know Virginia really got smoked that threw their numbers off defensively quite a bit you have to admit as Hall misfires from the corner they gave up 98 points to Gonzaga now the Zags are a great team we're going to see them later on tonight they won that game 98 to 75 Tony Bennett said of that defeat, it's painful, but it's good. It was a refining moment. It was humble pie, and, and he Tony said, for Bennett, his Virginia team. Yeah, and Tony Bennett, who's big on humility, doesn't mind that serving of humble pie every now and then. We went back and talked to him about a game that was very significant in his coaching career at University of Virginia on New Year's Eve. Back in 2013, they went to Tennessee and got blasted. After that game, when they got back to Charlottesville, Akil Mitchell and Joe Harris, two patriarchs of this program, in my opinion, came to his house. They had a meeting, and the rest has been history. And I asked Tony Bennett if he felt like that game against Gonzaga could be similar. He wasn't sure, but again, he's not putting off the fact that this team can be really good. It can be really good defensively, and he's hoping that that game will have something to do with it. Uh, Tony had a great line. He said his father who was, of course, a great coach himself, said, you better have a team you can lose with before you win. And so he goes back to that loss to Gonzaga. And, you know, and who knows, come tournament time, just how important having gone through that and bounced back from it is going to be for Virginia. I believe it'll be very important. Also, I think it gave Tony Bennett really a little more understanding as to how he needed to coach this team. He was playing a lot more guys, you know, significant minutes early. And I believe he's cut back on some of that right now and settled into a, a nice rotation, which right now has him a 10-point lead on the road over the top-ranked team in the ACC. We welcome you to Little John Coliseum in Clemson, South Carolina, for a battle of two top 20 teams inside the ACC. Clemson taking on Virginia. Dave O'Brien from home. Corey Alexander from home. Of course, so far, an ugly start for the Tigers. They look like a team that hasn't played in about 10 or 11 days, which is the case because of a COVID-19 pause. Last 10 possessions, 0 for 7, three turnovers. And we're seeing Virginia starting to find its rhythm defensively. And right now, kind of a, you know, a disaster for Clemson having to come off that and play this team. But more importantly, Clemson has to find a way to be able to get the ball in the basket, see it go in, because you know, Getting behind from Virginia and allow Virginia to build momentum defensively could end up being problems for the Tigers the entire you know this, The Cavaliers are not going to turn it over. They're number two nationally in fewest turnovers per game, just a little over eight. They take great care of the basketball. Casey Morsell on the baseline. Tough move there, but it won't drop for him. And, Obi, you mentioned it. The fact that Virginia doesn't turn the ball over much doesn't help Clemson's offense because Clemson forcing 18 turnovers a game. They're used to getting out in transition, being able to turn that defense into offense, but there hasn't been much of that in this game because Virginia only has the one turnover as Thomas Walter Tenzai comes in and knocks down a three, and right now Virginia stretching the lead to 13 points, and this really has to be exactly what the doctor ordered for, the, for Tony Bennett and his group coming on the road facing a team that has been – doing a, a job on teams, especially coming into this building defensively all season long. A turnover picked off by well, the 10th side, a 6'5 senior from Italy. He had some really bright moments last season. 18, and he had the game-winning shot against North Carolina. He had 27 against Louisville. Not getting a lot of minutes, but getting some minutes here in the first half for Tony Bennett. And right now, eight players have played for Virginia. That's more than Tony Bennett used in their win early in the week over Notre Dame. Only played seven players in that game. Now, Kihei Clark gets a bit of a break. And we talk with, you know, Coach Bennett about Kihei Clark and his role on this team. And, you know, he says that what he's doing right now is really a combination of his first two seasons. 
His freshman year, his first year, if you consider UVA terminology, he basically was a backup point guard who played alongside another ball handler in Ty Jerome. But last year, Kihei Clark was the primary ball handler. Everything went through him offensively. And right now, it's kind of a combination of that. But this Virginia offense is firing on all cylinders early. 50% from beyond the three-point range already and building a 16-point lead. Uh, well, the Tensai's come off the bench, and he's really given them a nice lift and another misfire by the Tigers. How about this? 18-2. Clemson came in 9-1, and 3-1 and in the ACC. Many would tell you they've had more good wins in the conference than anybody in the ACC so far, but they are getting smoked at the moment by the Virginia Cavaliers who come in number 18, Clemson ranked number 12. Clemson has not defeated Virginia in the last 10 meetings. They've all gone to the Cavaliers. Up, up top, got a good look, couldn't bury that shot. So, you know, Clemson has not played a game since January 5th and a victory over NC State, and man, is that rush showing tonight. From the corner, Dawes, another good look won't fall for him. Sims kept it alive, here's Trapp. And absolutely nothing falling for the Tigers. But two back-to-back -back offensive rebounds for Amir Sims will not be to delight of Tony Bennett and allowing Trapp to be able to get to the free throw line off of the second one. And when you look at what Virginia is doing on the offensive end of the floor, sharing the basketball, Jay Huff, their center, seven-foot center, drive and kick to Walter Tenzai, and Virginia sharing the basketball extremely well. But the difference between this Virginia team that we're seeing and Virginia's team a year ago, they have multiple players who can shoot the basketball. Walter Tensai, of course, was their primary three-point the three point threat last year, but now when you think about the fact that Huff's shooting the basketball so well, you've got Hauser, who's a career 40% 40 40 three-point shooter, Trey Murphy, and Casey Morsell, who but three for three from beyond three-point arc against Notre Dame, playing better offensively. So Virginia is dangerous on the offensive end of the floor, but this Virginia team is starting to look a lot like the teams we watched over the last decade where they're stifling on defense. The clubs have just scored their first point in ten and a half minutes. Making one of two at the foul line to make it 18 to three. Up spinning and dunking. Can't stop that for the 7 1 senior. An easy dunk. Jay Huff off to a great start. Seven points for him already. And not just getting it done offensively. Right now, Amir Sims on the offensive end not being able to find any success. And Jay Huff has been the primary defender on Sims as we see the two of them go at it on the block. He leans in. That won't drop. One and done there. And Virginia on the attack again. Cavaliers riding a 12-game ACC winning streak that goes back to last season. And a traveling violation. But moments ago, Jay Huff making sure the senior with the slam. And Casey Morsell, nice find to Jay Huff, who's patient, takes his time, and finishes over the top of Clemson's defense, was had no answer for Huff. Well, do not adjust your screen. That's an ugly start for Clemson. No way about it. No two ways about it. 20 to 3. Virginia with a big, big lead as we check out the ACC standings. Louisville and Virginia both 4 and 0 coming in. Clemson at 3 and 1. But before they had 11 days off with a COVID pause, the Tigers felt great about the way they were playing. So, you know, we come on the air talking about what a fine team they are, one of the great defensive teams in the country. And all of that's true, but when you have this much time off in between games as Brad Brunell has had, Corey, it's awfully hard to get yourself back into that groove again. They're showing that tonight. It has, and Brad Brunell told us when things are going good for you, the last thing that you want to do is stop. Often things, if, if things aren't going well, then you can use that break, but this came at the worst time for them after an overtime win at home versus NC State where they came back. And now as P.J. Hall is able to make their second field goal of the game for the Tigers, and you can hear the 1,800 fans cheering simply because they've recognized now there's not a lid on the basket. Well, it had been the largest deficit of the season for Clemson when it got to 17 points. And finally, a basket 20 to 5. But as you say, their second field goal, which came with about seven and a half minutes to go in the half. 
The Tigers DJ. trying to snap a 10-game losing skid to Virginia. The way this one has started, they're going to have to wait a little longer, but they've got plenty of time to make a comeback in this contest. They are on their home court. Well, and Clemson, you know, over the past couple of seasons has had a number of major comebacks, especially over ranked teams where they've trailed at halftime. But the way that Virginia's playing offensively, they're not going to let them back into this game. You talk basketball, you know everyone makes a run, but it's so difficult when you get behind to a, a Tony Bennett coach team simply because they take care of the basketball so well. And the way that this team is playing offensively, it's hard to make a comeback. Cavaliers come away with it. Wola Tensai has been the star off the bench for Tony Bennett. Drilling he threes. He's been the focus of their offense since he came into the game. And Wola Tensai didn't play against, against Notre Dame in the last game out as Kihei Clark puts on a beautiful, we call it a Smitty. Steve Smith used to do that to guys in the NBA all the time. And right now, Brad Brown now has seen enough. Tony Bennett is loving what he's seeing from his team up 20 here in the first mm. half on the road at Little John Coliseum. Kihei Clark showing off here on the road. The third year point guard from University of Virginia going Smitty on Clemson right now. Nick Honor, a very good defender, but no chance that time with Kihei Clark getting to the rim and showing off his ball handling skills. Love what Kihei Clark has done for this team this year. We saw a Bob Cousy award nominee. And right now, you look at his last five games, 14 and a half points per game, shooting 57% from the field, over 36 from beyond the three-point arc. But it's his leadership that has been most important. And that actually started, Obi, in the second half of the game against Gonzaga. He was the bright spot for them offensively. And he started to make plays when his team was getting nothing going. And I believe that's continued for them throughout this stretch. I think the point should be made, too, that yes, the Tigers are rusty, but Virginia's playing great basketball. You come into an environment, you know, this is a tough place to play. You know, you only have 1,800 fans in the stands, but this can be a very difficult court to win on for anybody. And you're up 25-5. to five. Pretty little fall away and knock down for two, and they just continue to pile on and open up a 27-5 to five advantage. And Obi, one of the things that we've seen and, and what's been talked about about this Virginia team this season, they're not as good defensively as they have been. And that, that, there's some truth to that. However, Virginia not being as good as they have been defensively still makes them probably, if not the best, one of the best defensive teams in the country. And right now, that's the second time we've seen Jay Huff connect with Kia Clark on the back door for an easy layup. And when, when you couple the fact that they're, you know, still a great defensive team with the fact that they're a much improved offensive team, this is why you're seeing, you know, the result that we're seeing thus far for Virginia. 29 to 7, and at times rubbing it in. And really, Hauser has not had much to say about it. He came in the top scorer for the Cavaliers, but so many other guys, like Kihei Clark, who gets fouled, and he goes down in the lane. Oh, by the way, it's not a good idea to foul Virginia. They make 80% of their free throws. Just 80%. Now, coming up, our Saturday showcase continues. BYU in San Francisco at 8 o'clock. And then a dandy coming up after that certainly could be at 10 o'clock and Zaga and St. Mary's number one team in the country taking on the Gales who would love nothing more than to pick off their arch rivals. So still plenty to come on ESPN and what has been a very, very busy and fascinating day in college basketball. Number seven, Michigan lost their first game. They got thumped by Minnesota 75-57. And Creighton, the number eight team in the country, they lost in overtime to Butler, 70-66. to Ohio State beat number 14, Illinois, in a brutal game in the conference. No basket there, a foul before that shot. 31-7, to Virginia. And, Obi, as you mentioned, the results of earlier games, this is the time where we would normally be settling into college basketball season. You know, the college football playoff is over. And right now you're in the midst of conference play. Everyone's starting to, to find their stride. 
But COVID has changed things. We've got the Clemson Tigers coming off of a 10-day break. I'm sorry, 11-day break where they have not had game action. But more important than not having game action, there were eight days where they did not have practice. And that is the biggest concern. They just resumed practice on Wednesday. Brad Brownell not even able to be with his team and practice on Wednesday or Thursday. He was able to join them yesterday. And this Clemson team looks like they haven't played in forever. At this point, Brad Brownell having a conversation with Nick Honor on the sideline, not even watching the game because he understands that right now there is no 24-point play to get them out of this. They've got to find a way to start making a difference on each and every possession. Tyson kicking it out top. Tigers will set it up here. Dawes has been very quiet. He came in averaging double figures. And a whistle with 3.50 to go. 31-7 Virginia running away early here in Clemson, South Carolina. If I am doing this, Coach, I, I honestly have to think about right now, We just, and like what you said about this being treated as a practice, you've got to find things that work for you against this defense right now because it is hard to say that this game is over. You're down 24 right now. But against Virginia, things are different. And you know, talk, talk about everyone makes a run. I don't know if there's a run that can be made to get Clemson back into this game because Virginia's not going to let up defensively. I've seen these two teams play, called a game where it was 61 to 36. And that was Amir Sims' first game against Virginia coming back to Charlottesville. And Virginia just obliterated Clemson in that game. And right now, this one looks like it could turn out to be worse if Clemson doesn't find a way to find some type of con continuity on the offensive end of the floor. Tigers, Corey, may be fortunate to get to double figures in the first half. They swing up top for Hauser. Well, the 10th side, big lift off the bench. He has nine. Clark has eight for Virginia. They've done a good job spreading it around here in the first half on their offensive end. Tyson inside will bank it in. Nice move there. We haven't said that very often about a Tiger with the basketball in his hands tonight. And Tyson of coming back, you see the, the mask on. Had a facial injury, so getting an opportunity to get back in the lineup. But that's really where it's been for Brad Brownell, having to pull anything he can out of the hat to try to get them going offensively. And Kihei Clark continues to stay on point with his offensive game. 11 points now for Clark here in the first half. Uh, Kihei came in averaging 11 per game, so he's already equal that 34 to 9. Well, this is shocking for a team ranked number 12 in the country. They need a whole lot more of that on a corner three there by Hemingway. And they finally do get into double figures. Now 12 points as we approach the two minute mark. Clark driving through the lane. Off the fake. He's going to drive it again. Nearly lost it. Eight on the shot clock. And a good block there by Sims. 6'8 senior out in front. Here's Tyson. Tough angle, and he banked it in. And he's showing some life. Yeah, Hunter Tyson giving Clemson a big spark off the bench. And we talked about Brad Brownell trying to find something to give the Tigers some life, especially offensively. And right now... Hunter Tyson has been that guy, and when you look, it's still a 20-point game, but you can feel a little more energy in the building. 1,800 fans in this one, and you hear all of it thus far, trying to help the Tigers overcome this deficit. 122 before halftime. Now the fans, as you mentioned, about 1,800 on hand here. For the meeting with number 18, Virginia. And OB, we, we hate the fact that this game right now has an asterisk beside it simply because of the break of Clemson. You know, I, I honestly don't think that if Virginia were not coming off of the break they were dealing with against Gonzaga, and I'm not saying they would have beaten the Zags, but it wouldn't have been as lopsided as it was. As it was. Virginia was now having to deal with Clemson's doing with right now. And when you take a team out of practice, you know, we're not even talking about games. When you take a team out of practice for that long, it really throws. It's almost like starting a season over again. And if this were game one for Clemson, having to face the Cavaliers and they've been playing, it would be a similar result as this. 
Well, Tigers forcing the turnover. They force 18 a game. Sims trying to take the baseline. He's shoved by Cafaro, who commits the foul. A little over 40 seconds to go in the first half. And you reference the Virginia loss of 98 to 75 early in the season to number one Gonzaga. Tony Bennett talked about that being painful, but a refining moment. He said a really good dose of humble pie, and there's Tyson again. Well, maybe what Brad Brownell has found throughout this deficit here in the first half is Hunter Tyson getting him back in the mix. Tyson has been out with injury, so getting him back into the mix has been a bonus. If there has been any silver lining in the dark cloud of this first half, that has been it for the Tigers. Yeah, he has scored their last seven. Going to have to get a shot in the air here. A couple of seconds between the game and shot clock. Clark will lift this one. And not there. Chance for a heave. Trying to get that off Tyson. And that's how the first half comes to an end. Largest first half deficit of the season for Clemson. 34-17. Virginia in control at halftime. We toss it back to the studio, Kevin and the gang. You're watching Saturday Showcase presented by Five Hour Energy. And tonight from Clemson, South Carolina, Virginia has owned the night so far. They're up 33-17. They did have a point taken away at halftime when they reviewed a three-pointer, made it a two. But Virginia up by 16. Clemson started out, Corey, three for 20 shooting it, finished four for their last four. But Virginia got started off great. Kihei Clark and Jay Huff sharing the basketball. Two easy ones for Kihei Clark, who had 10 points in the first half. But Clemson ended the half with an 8-0 run, and a lot of that had to do with Hunter Tyson getting involved in the mix, who's missed the last five games due to injury, but back on the court and paying huge dividends for Brad Brownell's team, trying to get them back into this one and at least make it competitive. And he will start the second half simply because of the performance he put on to end the first half and gaining the attention of his coach. Ally bringing us the first half stats. 52% shooting for Virginia. That's nothing new. That's about what they typically do, but five out of 13 from three-point land. Nice advantage in rebounding, and the Tigers were down by as many as 24 points. And so right let's now, see what the second half has for the Tigers here because they ended, as you mentioned, the first half on an uptick. But a different lineup for Coach Brownell to start the second half. And right now you see Nick Honor get an easy bucket. But he's going to try to pick up the pressure defensively, see if they can meet Virginia in the full court and try to find a way to speed the Cavaliers up. But that's difficult to do when you've got a ball handle like Kihei Clark taking control of the offense for Virginia. Well, Virginia had a similar game against Virginia Tech last season, and they held the Hokies to 11 at halftime. That turned out to be a game in the end, didn't it? It did, but the difference between the two teams is the ability to score offensively for Virginia. And last year, Virginia couldn't score. They built that big lead, but they couldn't score in the second half. It's going to be hard for Clemson to try to find a way to slow down this offense over Virginia that's playing with so much confidence. Right now, we see Sam Hauser knocking down the three to start off the half. He was pretty quiet in the first half, but he's their main guy, the Marquette transfer, who leads them in rebounding and scoring. On the line, 36 to 19 here as we get the second half underway. And Reese Beekman, simple drive and kick. And Hauser, who doesn't need to be anywhere close to the three point line, <laughs> stepping up and knocking it down. He probably has some orange on the bottom of his shoes from shooting that off the ball. Hauser starring at Stevens Point High School in Wisconsin. It's the same high school that Tony Bennett started in. Able to get that shot up there. And turnovers, Clemson with six, Virginia with only five to this point. And that's the 10th shot clock violation that the Cavaliers have caused this season. And that's the stat that is kept very close to the vest by the UVA faithful ever since Tony Bennett took over at the University of Virginia. Shot clock violations are cheered for when there are fans in the stands. And, of course, you always cheer for the big threes for the big fellas and right now back-to-back -back three pointers by the front court Jay Huff knocking down the three from the top of the key he has been hot now going back you know three or four games now as you mentioned back-to-back 18-point -back games for Huff that pass tipped and picked off by the Cavaliers 
on the drive and a pretty play there by Beekman. And Reese Beekman really has been a surprise to many this year. Of course, you know, Jabri Abdur Rahim was the most touted freshman coming into Virginia, but Reese Beekman has found a a place in the rotation for Tony Bennett starting the last few games. And with what he does defensively, he leads the team in steals now, 18 steals for Beekman, but also a capable scorer and playmaker to take some of the pressure off of Kihei Clark. Right to Clark as he picks it off. He'll drive it, a little pop for two. I love it. Under control, Kihei Clark recognizing Clemson trying to get back and retreat on defense, but you can't speed him up. The nice pull up in the paint for Kihei Clark playing with so much poise but what would you expect from a young man who's won a national championship and made the biggest play in UVA basketball history and there's some great ones today in college basketball as number eight Creighton lost in overtime to Butler this one Kansas and Baylor could be a dandy both teams ranked in the top five each of the last season's two meetings here, 43-19, a dominating effort for Virginia. Clemson trying to dig their way back into it. You, you wonder, as Hemingway knocks one down from three-point land, is this going to be one of those games where you're a fan at home, you see it's been a blowout, you turn away, you go watch a MacGyver rerun, you come back a half hour later, and maybe it's really tightened up at that time. The way Virginia's shooting it, no. <laughs> it's going to be tough. And right now, you know, and we can talk about the break from Clemson, and, of course, that has something to do with what's going on right now. But Virginia was playing great basketball coming into this game. And this was a test for Virginia because they were going to be playing against better competition that Tony Bennett was looking forward to with his team, especially with the way that Clemson has been defending. But right now, Clemson has not found an answer defensively for Virginia. They've done whatever they want on the defensive end, I mean, on the offensive end of the floor. And if you're Clemson, not only can you not score because of the rust, but you haven't found any answer on the defensive end. And that's going to make it difficult to make a comeback against this team. Yeah, because the Cavaliers just aren't missing. They've started the second half five for five. Up, bottled up, double team, swatted away by Sims. Shot clock is all the way down to two. Got to get a shot in the air, and they hit it anyway. And that's the kind of night it has been for Virginia. But a tough possession for Jay Huff there. But look at what Reese Beekman does. He gets involved where everyone else is watching. Reese Beekman runs down the 50-50 ball and ends up being a three-pointer for Hauser simply because of the hustle and effort made by Reese Beekman on that play, not giving up on it while everyone else was standing around watching. Remember, the Tigers have been sensational defensively. They're holding opponents to just 58 points a game on the drive by Beekman there. They're up to 51 Virginia already with over 15 minutes to go in the game. So they really have made mincemeat out of the Tigers defensively. Yeah, we came on the air talking about that this Virginia team could score. And we were talking about Clemson's defense. Well, one of those groups has shown up. Virginia's offense has shown up, but Virginia's defense has shown up as well. And right now, you know, Obi, I talked about on November 25th, the first game that ESPN Family Networks aired this year, I talked about how I felt like this Virginia team could defend and win another national championship. The defense was not where the offense was to start the season, but I do believe the defense is getting better. And that... You know, slice of humble pie served by Gonzaga. I would love for Virginia to have another chance at seeing the Zags in the NCAA tournament. I think things could get a little bit different, especially when you've got a guy like Sam Hauser knocking down three after three, as he's shown here this evening, showing the range and showing the game. Uh, Virginia just sizzling on top 54 to 26 here at Clemson. They are five for five from three point land since the second half got underway. 10 out of 18. As you said, when we put the graphic up at halftime, Corey, you know, those numbers on the left are pretty darn good. But the ones on the right are kind of off the charts so far. Well, they are, especially when you come in and take on the team that is supposed to be the best defensive team, you know, in the ACC. And one of the things we've talked about, Obi. You know, when you have to take the break and, and pause your, your program because of COVID protocols, we expect the offense to come back rusty. 
But defensively, you would think that, hey, okay, you still can put up a better effort on the defensive end of the floor. And Clemson has had nothing, no answer for Virginia when Virginia has the basketball after, you know, they've knocked down another three. Virginia has made six for six threes in the second half of this game. Yeah. And right now, they are playing with a tremendous level of confidence on the offensive end of the floor. And that didn't just start in this game. They've been doing that, but not against the level of competition thus far that we've seen from the Tigers. Uh, you make a great point about what coaches always tell them. You know, your defense should never take a night off, even if you're not hitting, you know, the broad side of a barn. Hauser up beyond the three-point line, which has been a great place for Virginia to be. Tonight, 11 out of 19. They have just shredded the Clemson defense beyond the perimeter. Here's another one way downtown, and another one that goes down for Hauser. And, and Obi, I looked at Hauser's numbers earlier today, and I mentioned that he was shooting 33% coming into this game from three-point range, which was a career low for him. It, Sam Hauser is a career 40% three-point shooter, even with this year being down. But you see it now as he continues to knock down three after three. But it's not just Hauser. Trey Murphy's getting involved in the mix. You know, Reese Beekman getting involved. Everyone is getting involved in the three-point affair for the Cavaliers right now on the offensive end of the floor. And you can just see that the Clemson has found no way to be able to have any level of resistance at the rim or beyond the arc. Shot clock inside 10. Clark has been a real star in this one. That's a kick ball with 12.53 to go. Uh, next Saturday night over on ACC Network, the Cavaliers will be hosting Jose Alvarado and Georgia Tech at John Paul Jones Arena in Charlottesville. That's at 8 Eastern. Who's have won six straight nine of their last 10 against the Yellow Jackets dating back to the 2013 season. And when you think about, you know, 2013, 2014, the year that Virginia won the ACC tournament for the first time since 1976, that started what, in my opinion, has been the most dominant team in the ACC over that stretch. No one has won more regular season ACC games than Virginia over that time. Virginia's won two ACC tournament championships, but solidifying Tony Bennett's resume as well as Virginia as a national power by winning a national championship in 2019 honestly in my opinion is what is enough to Tony Bennett will be a Hall of Fame coach he will be getting that you know be on that ballot soon after mm -hmm. doing so and the program that he has created in Charlottesville Marcel will drain a triple and it's just raining those tonight here at Little John 65 to 30 so it's gotten worse since halftime uh, by a lot. We, we still have 12 minutes to play. I mean, again, you know, and one thing with Virginia, you're not going to let up. But Amir Sims not having the night that he wanted to have against Virginia. But we'll talk about his signing when we return. Hello, my name is what? Amir Sims. You probably know me from dunking on Sports Center. But did you know I play football also? I have learned American Sign Language for four years. Bye. Got a great smile. He's a great kid. He's had a very tough night. His teammates have, too, obviously, as you check out the score, 65 to 30. But, Amir, three sports in high school. They were basketball, track and field, where he was a shot putter. He qualified for states in that. And how about this last one? Mountain bike. I mean, first of all, big guy, right? And all of his teammates were kind of like the same size. How do you find bikes like that, you know, to keep these guys up? But he, he loved it, and he's a very interesting kid. He really is. Yeah, he talked about, of course, Amir Calhoun at Florida State, and he on the mountain biking team at Blue Ridge School. And, and Amir, sign language, I'm not sure that was true. I mean, again, we see him throw a football 60 yards, but I asked him, did you play football at 
at Blue Ridge where you have to play multiple sports, and he said he did not. He chose to specialize in basketball. So yeah. did he sound language a lie? Is, is that a lie that he told? When was the last time you played football, Amir? That's what yeah, I need must, to know. You know, that might have been junior high or so, but he, obviously he can throw a football 60 yards. And on the slam, Clemson cuts into it a little bit. P.J. Hall with the basket. You know, he said he, he picked up the sign language because he wasn't in love with another language that was being offered. So a friend of his said, why don't you try sign language? You might really get into it. And he aced that. You know, obviously terrific with it. He's also been a mentor to to young people. He's just, he's a terrific student. He's a great kid. He's not going to beat Virginia tonight. He's never had that thrill of beating Virginia. He wants to beat him. He's going to have to look to the ACC tournament as maybe the next opportunity if he gets that chance. 65-32, the Cavaliers. Beekman underneath takes the hit and drops in to Reese Beekman, the Louisiana Gatorade High School Player of the Year. The freshman who's been pretty darn smooth when he runs the offense, hasn't he? Yes, he has. And Reese Beekman, of course, you talked about Louisiana High School Player of the Year, but Reese Beekman is actually from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And his, you know, his AAU coach, his guy, Steve Smith, wants to make sure that we correct that. He listens to games all the time, and everyone talks about Reese being from Baton Rouge. He's not from Baton Rouge. He is actually from Milwaukee. And, you know, he and his mom moving to Baton Rouge for him to go to high school. But Milwaukee is home for Reese Beekman, and he loves to make sure that everyone knows that. Actually played AAU with both Jalen Johnson and Jamin Brakefield that play for Duke. So it'll be an that. interesting matchup between those two. <laughs> when those two yes. teams get together. Not too shabby. Under 10 minutes to go as Newman drops in a basket, but those were so rare in the first moments of this game. If you missed about the first 10 minutes, Clemson barely got into the scoring column and swished in another long-distance shot. Well, the Tensai, who was really a key man in the first half in the surge by the Cavaliers to make it 70-37. to 37. You know, Virginia scored 100 points against Marshall, I believe it was, in the national championship year. We could see 100 in this game. You know, and 89 to open it up this year against Towson. And this is a, I mean, the way they're shooting it right now. Virginia doesn't look like they're going to slow down much at all. As Jay no, Huff sir. continues to find <laughs> himself in the sports center highlights. And this could be a 100-point game for Virginia. That's shocking enough where it is right now. But how about 100 at Clemson on their floor? And not a Tiger team with a slew of injuries. Yes, coming off a long layoff. But as we've made the point, I think you did very effectively. Defense is not supposed to take a night off like this. So you got to give Virginia a great deal of credit with the hot shooting by just about everybody from the opening seconds on. They have run away with this thing. You know, you can hear Brad Brownell trying to coach his team up. Seth Greenberg mentioned before we went to half. At this point, you have to find a way to make this like practice. You've missed so much practice time, and this is an opportunity for you to run some of your stuff and try to find some type of rhythm. Again, the season doesn't end today for the Tigers, but right now it has been all <laughs> Cavaliers as Chase Coleman gets involved. Everyone calls their favorite teammate on the bench for the University of Virginia Cavaliers as Reeks Beekman. Gets out in the passing lane and finishes it off in style. Speaking of Wisconsin, Sam Hauser has been shooting the ball maybe from Wisconsin tonight, knocking down three after three. We talked about Reese Beekman being from Wisconsin. We know Tony Bennett is from Wisconsin, and maybe it's something about shooters from the state of Wisconsin moving to the city of Charlottesville. 76 to 37, Virginia. Hauser with 14, along with eight rebounds. So he's right at his averages. It's about 33% from three point land, but that's going up tonight because he's made four out of five. But join the crowd of Cavaliers who are helping out the three point shooting percentage tonight because they have been absolutely deadly 
and building up a gigantic lead. Well, and Virginia also with the strong possibility of taking over the uh, defensive scoring reign, which they've held so long, not just in the ACC, but nationally. And right now, with a 36-point cushion over the Clemson Tigers, if they continue to push their points up and hold Clemson down, by the end of this one, Virginia could possibly be the league leader in scoring defense in the ACC. Huff flips it up there. That won't drop for him. The battle for it, and the Tigers come away. Again, Clemson has lost 10 in a row to Virginia. It's certainly getting under their skin. And moving quickly toward 11 in a row for the Cavaliers. They're trying to make a 13-game winning streak in the ACC tonight. They can do that with a victory. That goes back to last year. And, OB, I'm sure that's something that crept into the mind of the Tigers players when they got down 18-2 to two in this one. And when you know that you've lost 10 straight games to a team and you hear about the defense of Virginia and how difficult they are to score against, I'm sure that was something that really played into the part of the, the, the really the lag that Clemson had in the first half. We know they're coming off the break, but when you get down to a team that's been used to beating you the way that they have, that's yeah. something that can attack you mentally and hard to overcome. Sims couldn't get the roll. He's just been off from Jump Street tonight. Yeah, there's no question. You know, there's a block there. There's a mental block in the way for Clemson when it comes to these Cavaliers. Huff from the corner and a rare miss from distance tonight for Virginia. Cavaliers came in a preseason number four right now at number 18. But they're playing their best basketball of the season right now, and they're doing it as we get into the heart of ACC play. Honor gives it up. Sims launching. Not there for him. Virginia shooting 9 for 11 beyond the three-point arc in the second half alone. And, you know, when you think about this Virginia team, when they're shooting the basketball this way, Clemson could be playing its best game. They're not going to beat Virginia if Virginia's shooting the basketball like this. Right. There are very few teams that can, I mean, you know, we, we know that Gonzaga can score with Virginia, but Virginia, the way that they defend and they're playing in rhythm like they are right now, there are not going to be many teams that can beat this group shooting the basketball the way that they have, knocking down 14 threes, 14 for 25 in this game thus far. You know, whittling down that shot clock as they're doing again here. And then hitting shots, a whistle with 4.55 to go, and they're going to turn it over. Well, college basketball coming your way on Monday at 7 p.m. Should be a real good one inside the conference. Florida State and number 16 Louisville on ESPN. We saw Florida State hang 100 on NC State earlier as we got Kansas and Baylor after that on Monday. So the Sonic blockbuster on ESPN, two big games. And we talked about Florida State. And Florida State is another one of those teams who was expected to be really, really good and now starting to try to find their stride in ACC play. Scotty Barnes missing the game earlier today with an ankle injury. MJ Walker, who right now is playing at a first-team all-ACC level, actually missed part of the game with, you know, turning his ankle, but Florida State able to get a win at home over North Carolina, but a big test for the Seminoles having to go on, to the, go on the road to Louisville, which has been playing very good basketball here as of, as of late. Yeah, should be an outstanding game. Something tells me that Leonard's team's going to be there at the end. You know, come the ACC tournament, they're going to be rolling. Many believe that Florida State was the team to beat for a national championship last year when the season was shut down because of COVID-19. Well, if something tells you that Florida State will be there, Corey's telling you that Virginia will be there too. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> I would agree. I think Virginia's there now. <laughs> so again, and I agree with you. I think Virginia and Florida State, and those were my two teams coming into the year who I thought would battle for the ACC championship. And I'm not taking anything away from Clemson. I still think Clemson can really have a comeback and 
find himself right in the mix of things. You know, you want to have one of those top four seeds in ACC tournament play. But let me tell you who else. Mike Young and the Virginia Tech Hokies and the yeah. way that they're playing right now, mm -hmm. they are one of the best teams in the ACC, and they don't look like they're going to be slowing down anytime soon. I think that's a dangerous team in Blacksburg. I think they really are. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Five Hour Energy Shots. Get it done. Corey Alexander and Dave O'Brien coming to you from our homes. And Little John at Clemson, all Virginia. 78 to 42. Cavaliers have played a marvelous game. Clemson really rusty but played poorly defensively. That's your combination on the scoreboard. I'm, I'm disappointed in you introducing yourself as Dave O'Brien, however. Why is you that? Are not, you are not going by your moniker that I gave you, which is the Notorious, <laughs> and Notorious spelled K-N-O-W. K-N-O-W, that's right. K-N-O-W, Notorious, D-O-B. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm having the T-shirts made with your permission because yeah, I absolutely. need the copyright. Absolutely, yes. and, you, and you have to have a crown on. <laughs> on your picture on the t-shirt i'll i'll course, gratefully wear one of those if you're handing you them go. out there you go no question, we, we, no we gotta make that happen the notorious for, for our, our next broadcast 78 <laughs> 43 clemson at the line it, it is going to be very interesting to see the tigers next time out and how they bounce back Corey, because this is a beatdown of the first order against a team you're talking about hanging with in the ACC. And at this point, they certainly had. Tonight, Virginia clearly the better team in every phase of the game. So where do you where do you come from here? Do you simply write it off and say, well, we had 11 days where we did not play a college basketball game. COVID-19 got in the way. It happened to a lot of teams. And it, it happened to get us where we were we were totally off our game. I, I believe that you there is a part of that. But you also, as, as Brad Brunell, go to your leaders of your team and have a conversation regarding the understanding, the sense of urgency that is that has to be played with. And right now we watch Virginia play with that. But we also talked to Tony Bennett about the humble pie that his team was served and how they responded from. And, of course, everyone is going to get punched in the mouth. This is what happens in college basketball and college athletics. But how you respond from it is the mark of what type of team you will be, what type of person you will be moving forward. And right now, I'm sure that's something that Brad Brownell will be looking at his team and seeing how they will respond to this, you know, as you call it, beating. Or my mom used to call it a whooping. But, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> what ha yeah. happened here, you know, this evening. Virginia has 21 assists. 21 assists. Man, does that pop. And they have shared the ball so effectively. Well, you know, if you're passing to the guy who's, you know, to your left and he's he's shooting it from 25 and making every shot from 20 to 25 feet, you're going to have a lot of assists. And they have just shot the lights out this evening. Yeah, that's a very good point. When you're shooting 62.3% from the field at 53.8, it's not like you really have to make plays to get the assist. All you got to do is run the offense because <laughs> whoever's catching it is making it, which means that somebody's going to get an assist off that play. Well, the Cavaliers continue to rain the triples, building an 85 to 48 lead. They're not going to get to 100, but boy, you come into Clemson who leans so heavily on great defense, and that's the biggest reason they are 9-1, and one, and you hang 85 or more. Man, is that impressive. Well, coming up next on ESPN, 10-3 and three, BYU squaring off against 9-6 and six, San Francisco. The Don's 3-2 and two in the conference. And then at 10 o'clock Eastern, 7 Pacific on ESPN, the number one team in the land caps off a full day of college basketball on ESPN. Gonzaga taking on their biggest rival, 9-4 and four, St. Mary's. They're looking for that upset. And their first conference win, it's happened before. The Zags have won 6 out of 7, though, against the Gales coming into that game. And for the UVA fans tuning in and watching the end of this game, you see San Francisco Dons playing next and Gonzaga, the only two teams that have beaten the Cavaliers on this season. 
Virginia now will have a 13-game ACC winning streak at the end of this one where they won their last eight a year ago. And now their first five ACC games this season and starting to play Virginia basketball, which we've grown to expect over the past eight seasons in Charlottesville. Going to be banked up and in by P.J. Hall, the freshman from Spartanburg. Well, Virginia led early in the game 29 to 5. And about five minutes to go in the first half, that was the score. And just ran away and hid in this contest tonight. So putting the final touches on a huge win at Clemson. I don't think anybody in the ACC saw this coming. Virginia uh -huh. now the 11 consecutive wins against the Clemson Tigers. And there it is at the buzzer, your final score, 85 to 50. Our Pedialyte player of the game is Sam Hauser, 14 points, made four out of five from three-point land, and eight rebounds. His scoring and his rebounding, Corey, right at his season averages. Well, Sam Hauser just happened to be the guy. There were a handful of guys we could have picked from Virginia because no one missed for the Wahoos all night long. The second 35-point road win versus a top 25 team since wow. 1948 wait a minute oh what happened there oh that was the game i broke my ankle clear that off the screen we don't want to see that <laughs> you broke your ankle in that one i broke my ankle in that game oh. first game of my junior year glad that we could bring that memory to you thanks, thanks you Corey. All. great work with you again 85 50 virginia in a runaway back to the studio